Hello, hello. Hey there, hey there. Welcome into another edition of Between the Lines. I'm Josh Ellis, Editor-in-Chief of Success Magazine. We're going in the September-October issue once again this week, and I'm joined by the amazing Emma Johnson, longtime writer and friend of success. Emma is a activist and entrepreneur behind Wealthy Single Mommy, and her story in this issue is, it's about the money, honey. I don't know who, I did not have any idea who better to talk to about uh, couples and the money problems they run into, Emma, than, than you. I think you've probably heard all the stories. Right. Well, I'm coming at it at the back end when those money issues kind of maybe were the uh, make or break part of the relationship, the break part of the relationship. So yeah, I have, I've heard it all. I think that that's, you know, what, if anybody's reading this uh, with some, with a hopeful slant, they're trying to avoid that. Uh, and you have some great advice. The, the first part being like some realizations that people have to make. Number one being money matters. So we can't just sweep this under the rug and pretend like it, it's, you know, the elephant in the room is not there. Right. I mean, that is it. We're still very much stuck on this very, very romantic notion of marriage that there's one reason to get married and there's one reason to stay together. And that is that you found the other half of your soul. And that's enough. And that is the stuff of Disney fantasy movies, princess movies, and even those movies. I have kids. I watch those movies. Those movies are getting realistic. They understand that money and class and the hardships of life can make or break a relationship, right? So money does matter. It is often cited as the number one cause for breakups, uh, number one cause for stress in relationships. And we've seen that over the last couple of years with the pandemic. I mean, people's income was up and down and it is a deal breaker. And it's not just that it, it matters. It's that in virtually every relationship, it is going to be a, a cause of disagreement. And that's, you know, I think about, you know, work relationships too. I set, set the marriage part aside, like, what do you disagree about besides like the budget and um, the, the spending? Like it, any two people, when any time that money is concerned, like there will be disagreements eventually. There will be disagreements eventually, but it's also recognizing that money is much more mo than just money. I mean, the standard advice is get a budget, have meetings about it, maybe bring in a financial advisor. And I'm not dismissing or belittling those suggestions, but it is also recognizing that money is not just what is in the bank account. Money is power. Money is time. Right. So, so much about money in a relationship is really kind of trickles down into your schedule. Who's earning more? And that often affects who decides to get, either stay home full time with the kids or down ramp their career or take on more household responsibilities, maybe take on some of the caregiving of a, an elderly loved one in the family. So, and that all again comes back to money, right? It's all of these things and then it's power and it's control. So if somebody earns more than the other person, do they get more of a say in let's say what level of quartz countertop you're going to pick out for the kitchen renovation, right? And it sounds like a silly little funny thing, but those are, like, I just actually relocated and I'm looking at a home that needs a renovation. And we brought in an architect to look at this big project and he was just shaking his head. He's like, you know what, these deals, people get, get divorced over them. I'm in the middle of all these divorces and he's an architect. What's he in the divorce business for? But he is. You know, there's a series of, um, tensions that you cover in the story and it's how when to save when to spend um and some other things that you've mentioned already like uh, or, or or not mentioned today and one of those is the resentment that comes with making career sacrifices um mm -hmm. now that's the person often who is is the lesser breadwinner um taking a taking a step back in their career for family reasons have kids raise kids um that sort of thing but that that can be really tough on on uh, couples. Well, it's uh, tough on couples and it's tough on individuals. So yeah. much of the media that I'm reading and that's out there, it's always focused on how tough that is on women. And it is. If you don't have uh, your own income, you don't have your own money, you don't feel like you're having a trajectory in your career, you have lost power. And that power is very, very hard to get back. We know once you step off of the career ladder or you downshift it's hard to get that back. It's not possible. People do it every day. I, I did it. I see women doing incredible things, but I, it's not, we're not going to bridge this gap until we start recognizing how hard that is on men. 
Because if we are blindly assuming that it's women's responsibility to be the caregivers, it's somehow this feminine ideal or this feminine responsibility to be that caregiver, or she wants to be a caregiver, whatever, women are shoehorned into that role. Well, men are shoehorned into the role of the breadwinner. And that is an incredible responsibility, especially in a time when jobs that have been traditionally held by men um, in the blue collar market, maybe even in C-suite, these are uh, now going away. They're uh, union jobs. Um, being offshore, they're just going away, they're being systematized, outsourced to uh, robotics, and also being equalized because men and women are now holding a lot of those jobs. So we're putting all this pressure that has historically been on men, and we're, that's a huge, that's a huge pressure. Now I see it on the back end, where um, there's divorced men um, that I hear through my work all the time. I date, when I was dating, I was like, interacting with men, and they are often very, um, resentful and and feeling stuck because they're stuck in that breadwinner role without any control. They often lose time and relationships with their children because they have been marginalizing their kid's life and just shoehorned into that breadwinner role. So it happens on both sides. And I don't think we're ever going to bridge these gaps and get people together on the same page, couples on the same page with money and time and work and family if we don't recognize both sides of that gender coin. Everybody comes into relationships with their own hangups that go back to their mm -hmm. preconceived notions that they were raised with, that their parents had, that, you know, society has constructed over thousands and thousands of years, the, the male breadwinner paradigm being mm -hmm. part of that. Um, how do adults move past all this and, and you know, Hard. sort things out in, in a reasonable way to, so that, you know, that this, this doesn't cause... Uh, the, the kind of stress that leads to divorce. Yeah. I mean, bringing, understanding your story, your money story, you know, it's so, it's so important. It's just interesting too, to think about your family of origin. Like, you know, what, what was that like in your house? Was there plenty of money where you never had to worry about it? Was money a huge stress, right? Did you see your parents spending frivolously while you were broke and on free lunches at school? Um, did you feel like you were maybe spoiled and didn't have an appreciation for money? Um, all these things, you're not going to change them overnight. These are all just so, so hardwired, but it's very important and, and fascinating to unravel them and then to understand how that does or does not fit in with your partner. But then also looking at the larger context, you know, understanding like, well, you know, why do we think we need this expensive upgrade in the quartz countertop? Like, you know, my grandparents had for mica, my grandmother would fix these incredible meals three times a day and all the holidays, like she didn't have these crazy countertops. So like, where does that come from? And just understanding the societal pressure, whether that's from your neighbors or from your Instagram feed or whatever, that's also very important. And then what do you do about it? Okay, you have this brilliant insight into our, each other's psyches, but then what do you do? And that's where, you know, maybe a family therapist can come or a couple of therapists can come in um, and getting on the same page about breaking through that. And I will also call on everybody watching this. I mean, there are ways that we can support one another, right? Because I really believe so much in the power of our peer groups, right? So if you, if, if you and your, I just moved into a neighborhood where it's all these old historic homes and people are very interested in their interior design. It's really wonderful. It's like really this sort of art form. Um, but it's like, it, I imagine, I, I don't know, I'm new here, but I imagine it can become quite competitive. So if, if there's a way that we can be supporting one another and, and minimalizing that, you know, and, and supporting it's like, you know, we all like have to live within our budgets and, uh, you know, maybe being openly talking not only about money with our partners, but about with our friends and start removing this taboo and the competition amongst the people that are around us to start to normalize healthier money attitudes and habits. Well, I, I know that money and finances is something that you never stop learning about. It's sort of a lifelong education uh, thing. And so is, so is marriage and, and being in a partnership and, and, really understanding yourself as a lifelong endeavor too. So uh, hopefully success could be a part of that. I know that this story will help anybody that reads it. If you haven't yet, check it out in the new issue. Emma, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you so much. I always love talking to you, Josh. All right, everybody else, we'll see you next time Between the Lines. Have a great week, everybody. Mm -hmm.